still watching the newspaper review here on High Impact Television. We went on a break so that we can get into our conversation with our guest. He's joined us virtually. Um, thank you for joining us, Mr. Golan Olojede. Thank you for joining us on the newspaper review this morning. Yeah, good morning. Nice to be on the review. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the 2023 elections in Nigeria. It seems to be a lot of bickering back and forth in the APC since the vice president officially made his big announcement. Um, what are your expectations as a Nigerian, and what do you predict? Because the APC is giving us Tinumbu, um, Bola Tinumbu, and um, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. PDP is giving us Peter Obi, and uh, I've seen Wike. It looks like we have some very strong candidates, you know, coming out to show their um, intentions this time around. So what are your um, views over these choices? Well, um, there's, there are a lot of uh, candidates out there. Mm -hmm. uh, on the APC side, I can see about, uh, about seven candidates that have declared. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two others that may declare. Uh, Godwin Emefiele may declare. And we don't know if Kyle Defiemi will also declare. If those mm -hmm. do declare as well, then we'll have about nine candidates on the APC side. On the PDP side of things, um, the, the list is longer. There are about 14 people that have declared already mm -hmm. uh, under the under the under the PDP. PDP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So essentially, the uh, electionary season is here. And uh, we will continue to see some of the things we've seen in the last 24 hours in that part, in that uh, uh, space. Um, the first hurdle that the politicians need to cross is actually not you and I. It's not the voters yet. Okay. It is their primaries, the party primaries. Mm -hmm. So that is why you see uh, a lot of the appeal and engagement that are going on right now are with the people that can influence those primaries. So yesterday, uh, you saw there, there was uh, Yemi Oshibajo who met with uh, the governors, okay. some governors, some APC governors. Okay. Later that same day, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinobu also met with the same set of governors. Mm -hmm. Those are not about you and I. They are about the primaries. Yeah. Uh, and the, the PDP side of things, we saw a situation in which all the Southeast candidates had a meeting in which they were trying to work together to persuade the PDP to zone the party candidate, uh, candidacy to the Southeast. You know, so that, that, that is another thing that is going on uh, uh, at, at the PDP side of things. Mm -hmm. But specifically on the, um, on the vice president's declaration, mm -hmm. there have been so much issues around this declaration. But see, here, here is the way I look at some of these things. The vice president is 66 next year. Yep. So... He has only one shot that he can take at that presidency. If he wants, if he has a desire to be president, mm -hmm. this is the only shot that he has. Okay. Because if he doesn't take this shot, the next shot will be eight years' time. He will be 74 by that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what he will normally consider is to say, I have only this one shot. Should I take it? Mm. Or should I pander to people who said, oh, maybe you have been part of this first administration, what mm -hmm. have you guys done? Mm -hmm. Or other people say, oh, you are a betrayer to your benefactor if you decide to contest. Mm -hmm. All those, whether you're saying uh, he's a betrayer to his benefactor or you're saying oh, he was part of the past, they are irrelevant to him as far as the decision to contest is concerned. He has only one shot, and if I were him, I would take that shot. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the next thing is to say the hurdles that are ahead uh -huh. Those are the real decision-making points. For him, he will take his shot, and then he will be happy to say, oh, I took the shot, and then I failed at the primaries, mm. or, or I failed at the general elections, than to say, oh, I never took that shot. Mm. Yeah. So the, the primaries is the real deal for now. If you listen to the, the political speech, the declaration speech of most of the APC uh, candidates now. You will see a thread along the fact that they will, they will pander to the president to say, oh, um, the work you have done are great. Uh, I'm coming in to take those works further. So whether you listen to Amici's speech, you will see that there, 
or Oshibaju speech, you will see that there, or Yaya Bello speech, you will see that same thread in which they are pandering to the president. Why are they doing that? Mm. Because the president is influential okay. in the first hurdle, which is the primaries. Okay. Well, now we, we know that the primaries is very, very important. But you, you, this talk about our last chance or their first chance, is that supposed to be a, motiva a motivation? Because it's not just him that is in that position. If we're looking at uh, almost every, even Bola Tinumbu's age, we're looking at Atiku's age, except maybe the, the younger ones. But almost all of them, David Dumai, who else do we have? Um, Atiku. If if we're looking at their ages, they don't seem to be uh, people who they have... are. They are mostly old people. Yes. Apart from uh, someone like uh, GYB. Why yeah. I mentioned that fact is that there were people who believed that Oshibadi should not even contest at all. Well, were you, saying, I, I'd like to even ask you, were you expecting it? Because about two, three weeks ago, there were lots of speculations, groups, it looks as if some groups were calling him to come, just as we are hearing about the Mefiele, as still as speculations. So it didn't seem that a lot of Nigerians would see that he comes up. But aside him coming coming out to make his, um, his intentions known, his declaration, how about his Speech. It looks like the speech, you know, got more reactions than the declaration itself. It looks like the content of what the, the statement he made, especially to towards his current administration, got a lot of Nigerians talking. So I'd like to also ask you, what do you think um, about that? Do you think that he went in the right direction? Do you think that, you know, the words were well put and everything was fine? Yeah, you see, the, we, we as voters, as citizens, we, we need to situate ourselves in the mind of the politician to understand some of these issues. Mm. Number one, for me, the speech wasn't as vibrant as it could be. And that is because it was a cramped speech. He has prepared the speech. He put it upstairs in his head. He's a professor of law, so he knows how to handle all of that. And he came out there and uh, regurgitated what he has put in his head. So for me, he wasn't proceeding right straight from the heart. So he was mm. a bit not vibrant in my, in my opinion. Mm. Number two is what you said people were talking about that he, he alluded to the fact that he wanted to continue where uh, the president has stopped, you know, mm. praising what he has done. And I'm saying that people focus on Oshibajo's speech they have not paid attention to the previous speeches. Mm. That same commentary, that same thread mm. is in the previous speeches. If you mm. call up the uh, Governor Yaya Bello's speech, you will see that same pandering to the, the, to the president. You will see it in that speech. If you call up Amechi's speech, you will also see that same pandering to, the, to, to PMB in that speech. But apparently the one that attracted attention was the uh, uh, Shibajo speech. It, 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 it appears as if a lot of people, despite um, all, all the deniers, that were actually expecting that he would declare. You know, that's why there must have, maybe that was why there was so much interest about his own speech. Mm. I, I, I don't know. But the speeches of the previous guys were along the exact same line. Mm. Uh, the government is doing well. We want to take further what the president has been doing mm. and, 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 and all of that. You know, but you, you see, like, I, yeah, okay. Okay, but, but I'm, I'm even trying to also look at um, the reasons they are giving us for coming out to contest, you know. Aaron, isn't this also a pointer? When we ask things like, why do you want to come out? Why do you want to be president? Isn't, are we not having a repetition of things that sound like um, personal ambitions or matters that have been promised since the time period of MKO Abiola? I mean, isn't, isn't there a repetition <laughs> of, yes, I'm, I'm, that's, that's what some Nigerians are saying, and I'm just putting it out to you here. Don't you see a pattern in our political statements? Don't they all feel the same over the no, years? You see, those what they have done is to give a speech. They told us stories. There was no engagement. It wasn't that you and I or the or the voters have engaged them. And this has also been part of the problem over the years. Mm. Okay. We must engage them on whatever they say they were going to do. Let me give you one very funny example. Some people said, oh, the president in 2015 said he was going to make $1 to be $1. Naira. 
I, I did not I did not know when he said that anyway. But let's assume that he said it. The question is that so did we ask him how? Hmm. Did we put his feet to fire to tell us exactly how, how he would do it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the quality of engagement from the voters themselves is, has been extremely poor. Though we have mm -hmm. not gotten to the engagement level now, but I've been seeing a few of these presidential aspirants on TV mm -hmm. uh, engaging with uh, with uh, uh, interview interviewers, and mm -hmm. the engagement has been very poor so far. Some of most of them, and at least literally all the ones I've watched, uh -huh. they don't even have a clue at all as to how to achieve what they said they were going to achieve. Mm. Not not the slightest clue. But it is easy to list, I will do this, I will do electricity, mm. I will do uh, road, I will do water. Whatever you said, it's easy. That is but that, that's why they say um we 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 campaign in prose in, mm -hmm. in poetry, okay. but we govern in prose. Mm -hmm. So, if they list all those things, mm -hmm. the owners is on us as voters to engage them bullet point by bullet point. Okay. You said you would do this. How? Take me through the story. How do you want to do it? Oh. And let them speak to this. There are several critical matters of state that are on the table. These candidates are not even speaking to these critical matters of state yet. Mm. There is spoil subsidy, there is uh, education finance funding, there are so many is, is, is critical. There is even life after oil for Nigeria. Who is speaking to it? Mm. Nobody is speaking to anything. Everybody is, for now, is only telling us they have an ambition to be president. You know, before when that time comes, we must engage them. Mm, yeah, talking about engaging them and um, critical matters. Before we move away from this uh, um, this um, topic to cr some critical matters now, Asu is on the hot seat, and we're going to have that conversation. But a statement by a political aspirant, a younger political aspirant last week on the papers, is that the um, tickets, the amounts they have to pay to be able to even get tickets to contest is too expensive, and it is deliberately fixed so that the younger are not able to pay 40, 50 million naira to be able to get a presidential ticket to even come out to contest. Is this also a tactic to be able to, you know, reduce the number of people who can come out to, um, you know, express their declaration and give their views as to become president? Because when he mentioned this, um, these fees, I felt like truly, as a young person who is probably just in his early 30s or in his late 20s, you might not want to take your all your hard-earned money just to go and buy a presidential ticket <laughs> that you are not sure that you're going to get at the end of the day. So when he made that statement, I felt like, okay, this is this is something we should talk. We should talk about. We should ask ourselves: Is that a tactic? Don't you think it's too expensive? Fifty million, forty million naira. I mean. Well, um, I, I think one of the parties recently announced that all women contestants can contest for free. Can get oh, wow. Free. That you is know. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So um, it, it is something to consider because when the, when the price is too high, we automatically weed away a lot or, or send away or discourage mm. a lot of uh, prospective contestants. Mm -hmm. um, but let me also add that... When it comes to raising money, mm -hmm. people can raise money. Young people can raise money. In this Lagos, yes. young people fed us on the street of Lagos for several weeks when they were doing answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there is a need for a candidate, a young candidate that people believe in, mm -hmm. young people know exactly where to go to and how to raise the money. Mm. And they will indeed raise it. We have seen it in the past, and we, it can be reenacted at any time. Mm. That, so, that is the reality about raising money. Okay, so you're saying that this particular candidate should go work on his social capital. He should, you yes. know... Uh, Capitalize on your constituency, mm -hmm. the young people who believe in you. Mm -hmm. When about... Uh, and don't also forget the, the volume, the sheer number of young people that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. The number is staggering. Yep. If you can get a million people who believe in you, or 500,000 people who believe in you, mm -hmm. and are willing to pull down 5,000 naira. You know how much that comes to automatically? If you have 500,000 people who are willing to give you uh, uh, 5,000 naira, you are, you are going to raise about 25 or 250 million naira instantly. 
Mm, mm. Okay. That, you that's... Know? So I think the young people must look in the direction of possibilities rather than feeling discouraged that these older people are trying to scheme them out of the event. But at the same time, we need to address the issue of high cost of uh, for, for, oh. for contestants. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing your views with us, Bola Olegede. Thank you for having us, um, joining us on the newspaper review. Thank you. Do have a great day.